Right, well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio presented by Celebs.com here at TIFF. Tony Krowitz, uh, Thanos Samaras, Cody Smith McPhee, you and Leslie. First, congratulations on the film last night. How, how, how is it screening it for different audiences and, and feeling the response? Tony, have you noticed any difference perhaps between screening it you know, back in Australia to, to people that are kind of familiar with you and your work and, <laughs> and over here? Well, yes, and also the uh, film's based on a book by a really well-known Australian writer. So we've had a couple of screenings in Australia and a lot of the people were fans of the book. So it's been great coming to Toronto for people who know nothing about the book and just seeing the film just as the film. Yeah. Um, and it's also great because the film deals with a character who's Australian but who has European roots, which a lot of North Americans have as well, both Canadians and Americans. You know? So it's been great speaking to people here who really kind of get the themes of the film and that kind of idea of looking to Europe, you know, where your grandparents and stuff came from. Um, you and your last name doesn't suggest that you're of Greek heritage, <laughs> nor did yeah. it suggest you were of Jewish heritage when yeah, you were yeah, at Don yeah. Boy with Tony as well. Yeah, what, yeah. what is it about him throwing you into these ethnic <laughs> I don't situations? Know. Actually, when I was auditioning for it, I kind of, like, I really wanted it, but at the same time I was kind of thinking, oh, I don't know if Tony's going to cast me because I played a Jewish character in <laughs> Jew Boy. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the great thing was um, uh, Christos, the writer of the novel, was really helpful. Like, I met up with him and he kind of took me around to a lot of Greek cafes in Melbourne and we spoke a lot about it. So, and I spoke to a lot of, um, you know, Greek Australian um, actors and, you know, as many people as I could kind of talk to and soak it up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Although what struck me there was when you said when you were auditioning. Yeah, yeah. So he still made you audition for it. Yeah. 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 Well, it yeah. wasn't, it, uh, I felt really bad about that in some ways, but there were a couple of really important reasons. And one, like, it was to be really specific about um, the character and being a Greek character and he's not Greek. And also just in terms of the producers and the investors being able to go, here's Ewan, whose work they all know really well, but doing something which is so different from who he is. Right. And the work he's done before. So part of it was proving to them and just assuring them. Yeah. And, and Thanos, like, you know, obviously of Greek descent, given the name, um, but uh, how did you feel going back, you know, shooting in Athens and all these places with these guys, obviously having accents and coming from other places, how, t to you, did it feel like they were being true to the region and, and authentic, and, and how did that feel? Um, well, it, it felt like, um, well, the story and and the reality of shooting was kind of close. There were a bunch of Australians in Greece um, trying to assimilate and kind of blend in. Um, but uh, I don't know, they, uh, they just seemed very uh, comfortable. And um, We worked with a Greek crew as well, so it was a real great mix of it was a mix Australians of people, and yeah. Greeks. Yeah. So in some ways it was like a Greek film because most of the crew were Greek. Yeah, know. it was a an, an Aust Greek Australian mix mm. within the movie and and in the reality of shooting it was pretty much the same thing. And prob probably a lot of um, North Americans don't realize how how many Greeks or how how Greek Melbourne is as a city and how many Greeks there are in Australia. Yeah. So, um, so that culture might come across so automatically for Australians, but bringing it across here, a whole different ballgame. How is that logistically moving for all of you? Like moving across, you know, Paris, Athens, um, outside of Athens, in the hills and stuff like that. Just logistically making a movie of that scope. Um, what kind of time did you have in your hands to get to know the areas before you shot there? Um, well, my wife, um, her name's Kate Shorten, made a film in Germany last year as well. So it was just fortuitous that we were both making films in Europe. So we spent the year based in Europe. So I was able to spend a lot of time going to Greece and getting to know the country better and do a lot of location searching and research. And the same with Paris and Budapest. So that helped, but it was a logistical wrangle to shoot yeah. in four countries on the low budget. Were you shooting a lot of stuff guerrilla style or did you really hook up with locals and location managers and things like that in those areas that helped you out? Yeah, well, like I said, like worked really closely with location managers early on, um, which is one of my favorite parts of filmmaking, like just being able to soak up the locations. But um, when we were going, there were 
10 Australians who went. So that was like the guerrilla crew. And then we'd pick up more conventional sized crews when and if we needed them. But we were sometimes shot really conventionally and sometimes we're able to just go, there's a protest on in Athens, let's just six of us walk down and just yeah. throw Ewan in the middle of it. And that wasn't on the call sheet. Right, I remember yeah. you last night saying a little bit about that, about walking yeah. into this kind of melee of people protesting in Athens. The film has so much about the history of Europe and the, and the kind of, you know, you were talking about the bigotry last night, mm. but um, the, the immediate history going back to the Second World War and stuff like that, but did you feel now, I mean, Greece is a pretty volatile country right now, did that kind of help your situation in terms of just uh, tapping into that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess the thing is the character, um, he's a guy who's completely out of his comfort zone and completely out of his element. So that was sort of perfect for me in a way. Like I didn't get to see any of the places before we actually shot there. We kind of hit the ground running and just immediately start shooting. So seeing all these places for the first time and meeting actors for the first time, not um, getting to kind of meet them before or talk about it or, you know, a few Skypes here and there. Did you Skype with Cody? No, I refused. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Cody, because you're living you're living in California right now, right? Yes. Yeah. So had you met Tony before you went to the location to start shooting, or uh, was it more faith based? No, it's been actually a lot of Skype. This is a this is a big advertisement for Skype because we all um, <laughs> we were rehearsing on Skype and you know just talking about the characters and stuff, and then like Ewan said, we all got on set and we all kind of met for the first time, and then it was just kind of a mix of soup then, and mm -hmm. just I don't know, started from there. And for you, you know, it's, it's a quiet character, um, but definitely kind of has this, you know, strong, you know, European sense as well. Right. Have, like, your last name as well, Smith McPhee, again, not, <laughs> not very yeah. European, yeah. Uh, or, or Eastern European at least, or whatever. So, so what did you do in terms of uh, kind of tapping into what he wanted? Um, I, I really just did a lot of research on kind of my side of the story at, at start at the start I just read the whole story as itself and looked at everything the political side and all that and then I just worked on uh, Yosef and and um, I did a lot of research on refugees and stuff and you know what their life is about and how they're always moving and they're, they're very wise at a young age and um, yeah I just worked off that and I had a lot of fun doing this character yeah and, and your work with Ewan as well um, obviously it's pretty personal do you try and do you, do you try and create like an intimate sort of set for those situations? Because it seems like there were a lot of people around in some of those moments. Mm. Well, uh, I suppose it's a mix depending on the scene. Um, what some scenes that were more intense is we just would clear the room, which we had a great first AD, and basically just work because we were so limited in rehearsal time that we just go work it like a rehearsal. So we'd work it up, you know, and chat about it, and then bring in the crew and. Film it. Have you ever obsessed about something the way that Ewan's character was obsessed? By All the time. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm pretty obsessive <coughs> character. Um, I think the obsessive nature of the character was something I found really intriguing, of someone who just can't let go of something. And also someone who's trying to find out the truth, um, which is sort of at the heart of what the character's trying to do in the film. Yeah, Ewan, what was it for you? What did you tap into for, to find that sort of that real determination that he had? I don't know. Like, it's a funny, because in, in many ways, like especially at the end of the film, he's certainly a victim, but he's kind of completely complicit in his own sort of downfall. You know, he's the one that's kind of moving forward and he's asking the questions and he's the one, you know, that brings Cody back to the hotel room. And, um, yeah, I suppose... Um, I don't know, he's a very different guy from me in a way. And I think, I think there's a version of it that could have been sort of the wide-eyed, innocent Australian who goes to, you know, deep, dark, scary Europe. And Tony was a lot more interested in having someone, it's kind of a bit more uh, arrogance to him. Like, you know, I know how the world works. You know, I understand these political situations. And when he gets there, it becomes increasingly clear that he doesn't and begins this spiral. Like, I was a lot more, I think we were a lot more interested in that guy unravelling than the, you know, the kind of innocent, yeah. yeah. Um, after the screening, a lot of people were gobsmacked when, you know, I mean, often it takes a time for people to warm up for a Q&A, but yeah. last night it, it wasn't like anyone left. It's just that everyone was kind of still soaking in yeah. the kind of gut punch in the, that happened. Well, that, you kind of get to the end of the film, it's as, like, any as were we, It was the first time, time. Cody yeah. and I mm. saw the movie, and I mean, I, I was 
I was speechless. I just didn't want to say anything. Or I was like, I had such a, a, I don't know what it was, adrenaline or just, so it was so intense that it, it, I don't know, I was like shaking through the whole thing. And I don't know, I think it was because it starts off slow and you feel so comfortable and then just so much happens and then it keeps hitting you and hitting you and hitting you and it doesn't get any better. And then it's just, you go on this huge adrenaline ride. Have you been thinking about it like since? Yeah, and I, I've been thinking that, you know, these guys have seen it again and again, but I think once is enough for me. It's very... Yeah, for a while. Just, yeah. Yeah. That was the second time I'd seen it. So I thought it, it was a bit easier, but it was still, you know, it's still... Quite is it hard watching yourself? Because it is a fairly exposing role. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I always knew that. I mean, one of the things I was so attracted to it was because I was kind of really scared by it. You know, I read the script and was like, right, that's a really challenging role that's going to require a lot of bravery, you know. And I suppose, um, I mean, you're always going to look at something you did and go, oh, that, uh, but, you know, I, I guess um, it kind of really required you just to sort of throw yourself out there and throw yourself into it. Well, I know a lot of people last night were blown away by the film. I certainly was. And, and so congratulations on, on making another powerful movie and, and looking forward to seeing where it goes next. Great. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks man. You, man.